guys, welcome back. So today we're making another paleo packed lunch. We're making a paleo bolognese using uh, sweet potato spiralized noodles. So if you haven't got a spiralizer yet, you have to check them out. Um, so I'll put some links below as well to some places that you can buy some spiralizers. Mm -hmm. But we just have this cute little green one. Um, they're really great. You can do like zucchini noodles. You can pretty much spiralize all vegetables. Um, yep. And if you're trying to look for a replacement for pasta and things like that, I mean, it's not going to be exactly the same. No. But it kind of gives you a bit of that mouth feel and that, you know, It's just something noodly. a little bit different and yeah. a bit interesting. And the reason we're using our sweet potato noodle for our packed lunch is because although we like the um, zucchini noodles, they can get a little bit um, soggy. soggy if they're being kept for a longer period of time. So because we're going to potentially freeze some of these meals, so if you're prepping on a Sunday and you're going to eat for the whole week, uh, say at work or school, you're probably going to want to freeze two to three of those lunches. So that's why we're using sweet potato. Um, so some other things that are great about this meal in particular. So we're going to be using um, tomatoes, so fresh tomatoes as well. When you cook tomatoes, it releases the lycopene, which is an antioxidant. So which also can help protect your skin from the sun naturally, mm. which is interesting. Um, and there's also a lot of fresh herbs, and then we've got onion and garlic, which is great for gut, good food for your gut bacteria. And we've got some organic grass-fed beef, so there's plenty of protein in there. Good and fats. also good fats. Um, olive oil. Olive oil and some coconut oil for cooking. And... A good source of healthy carbs <laughs> from the sweet potato. Yeah. We're also topping our bolognese with a lemony, garlicky cashew cheese. So this is kind of an optional step, um, something that you might want to do if you're looking to do something a bit more interesting. It adds that creamy um, texture and also kind of mimics that um, like white sauce mm. um, element. But that so. said, I think a lot of um, paleo people as well do eat some dairy. So. You don't have to always cut out dairy completely yeah. if you don't have a problem with it. But if you were doing dairy, you'd probably be tending more towards like a high fat, natural kind of dairy. Cheese and food. So for this recipe, you're going to need a sweet potato for the noodle base, about four fresh tomatoes, onion and garlic, a bunch of fresh basil, some pitted olives, tomato paste, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, and some good quality beef mince. Now for the cashew cheese, what you'll need is about a cup of soaked cashews, some lemon, garlic, and some salt and pepper. So we're just gonna start by spiralizing our sweet potato noodles in advance. So what I've done is I've cut, or I've peeled and cut our sweet potato into about quarter pieces and I'm going to make them small enough for my little spiralizer. Now you want to have flat ends on both sides for the spiralizer that we're using. Okay so you just spike it on the end and then So I'd recommend if you're going to do spiralizing a lot to get a big, more heavy duty spiralizer than this little one. The thing I like about this spiralizer is it's really compact. Um, I don't have a big kitchen, so it's good for the odd time when I want to make spiralized noodles. Okay, so we're just going to start by lightly frying off those sweet potato noodles with a bit of coconut oil. Okay, so we're just going to lightly cook these um, until they're a little softened. We don't want them to be completely raw. And I also like to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so now we're just going to fill up the base of our lunch containers with our noodles. Okay, so now we're just going to be doing our fresh ingredients for the sauce. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to take the easy way out and we're going to put it all into our food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you could also just chop these all by hand. Um, you'd have to dice up your tomato really um, small so that it'll break down. Okay, so um, before we put it into the processor, we're just going to be chopping our ingredients roughly. And just a few cloves of garlic. Okay, so now we're just going to load this all up into our food processor. So also when you're making a tomato dish, you want to be adding in a bit of fat, especially when you're trying to absorb the um, lycopene, which is a fat soluble nutrient. We want some traditional Italian flavor. Okay, so now we're just going to fry off our mince, so of course we're using some coconut oil. We're just going to pop in about uh, a tablespoon or so of tomato paste. Once the meat is lightly brown, we're just going to turn the heat down and we're going to put the sauce over the top. So that's just important so that it's not really cooking that sauce hard when we've got the olive oil in there. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do is just put in a little bit of balsamic just to give it a punch of flavour. And then we're also going to put in our olives. Okay, so we're just going to drain our cashews to make the cashew cheese topping. So we've been soaking these for a couple of hours and now what that does is it removes some of the phytate and the nuts which makes them easier to digest. Okay, so I'm just going to add these to the food processor along with one clove of garlic and I'm just squeezing half a lemon and catching my seeds. So we'll also need three quarters of a cup of water. Okay, so after you've processed for about 30 seconds, I'm just going to add a bit of salt and pepper. We're getting towards the end of cooking the mince, or the sauce, and I'm just going to break up a bit more basil to put it in while it's still fresh. So when you put fresh basil in, it's just going to taste better. Just breaking that up roughly. So now we're pretty much ready to serve. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this recipe or you tried it out, leave us a comment below. Next time we're thinking about making a coconut chicken curry. So let us know if that's something you're interested in or whether you have some suggestions for us. And otherwise, until next time, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos every week, subscribe. Bye guys. Bye.